This is the Red River, a place of rich, fertile land and bountiful opportunity for some in the decades before the Civil War. A place of wealthy planters, enslaved peoples, and poor farmers who had cleared the wilderness, laid out farms, and created a large, successful agricultural enterprise. Cotton was king. In 1861, the nation's struggles came to this part of Louisiana. With political leaders that saw their interests tied to slavery and states' rights, most supported secession from the Union. When Louisiana joined the Southern Confederacy, a buoyant optimism prevailed in households across the state. Many men marched off to serve the Southern cause. After three long years of campaigns filled with disappointment and sacrifice on distant battlefields, hopes for an easy victory vanished in the smoke of battle. New Orleans fell to Union forces in the spring of 1862. Baton Rouge soon followed. July of 1863, Vicksburg and Port Hudson on the Mississippi River also fell to Union forces, and half the state was controlled by invading Union armies. With the strong Union presence, with gunboats plying unchecked on the Mississippi and other major rivers and bayous of the state, enslaved peoples began to wander in search of freedom. People fled their homes, leaving neglected fields and abandoned homesteads. Deserters and bandits preyed on all. A place once so stable became touched by the terrible and cruel hand of war. The Red River Valley remained the last area of the state not dealt a serious blow. Harvested cotton remained stored for future shipment. Supplies flowed from Texas for struggling Confederate armies. The state's capital and an important military command center in 1862 moved to safety at Shreveport on the upper Red River. Confederate General Kirby Smith was charged with the defense of the Red River Valley and two other states. You cannot understand the history of the American Civil War unless you look into Louisiana's participation into the war and you can't view Louisiana's participation in the war unless you talk about the Red River Campaign of 1864. Louisiana's observance of the Civil War sesquicentennial uh, is happening over a four year period uh, because there were many battles fought in Louisiana uh, during the Civil War, and most specifically, Central Louisiana focuses on the Red River Campaign, which is what was fought up and down the Red River. Uh, our uh, special events are uh, March 7th through the 10th, and there are four days of uh, many different uh, events that will be broadly appealing to lots of different people. The 150th commemoration of the Civil War will be held in central Louisiana in uh, Pineville, which is the sister city of Alexandria just across the river at our historic Fort Randolph. It's a state park. Forts Randolph and Beulah were located here, and we're very proud to have this uh, new facility. I'm standing in front of a campfire that was typical of what you may have seen uh, during the Civil War uh, during this period of, of history. This is what uh, some of our soldiers, the Confederate soldiers, may have been uh, trying to stay warm by during that, the winter of, that, uh, of 1864. The reenactment is going to be the centerpiece of the weekend, uh, the, the two reenactments on uh, Saturday and Sunday. They both start at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We hope to have a, a, as much as 200 reenactors here, and there's going to be a Civil War, uh, a Union contingency and a Confederate contingency, and they're going to meet in battle on, the, on our field here on the site. It's historic to what happened during the, during the uh, different skirmishes during the Civil War in this area. Life was very difficult on both sides, uh, and especially on uh, the Confederate side where supplies were more meager, uh, and uh, they had to, to put up with a, probably a lot harder uh, way of life. They, they suffered from the cold, they suffered from the wet, they suffered from the uh, distance from their families. Uh, all that uh, went into, uh, into the mix that made life hard for both sides during the Civil War. The Red River Campaign begins here on March 14, 1864 at Fort Derussi, Louisiana, in Avoles Parish. Initially, the Federals were unopposed to the got to Alexandria. On March 21st, they run across a cavalry unit sleeping at Henderson's Hill and captured them almost totally. So the inauspicious beginning for the Confederates of the Red River Campaign was pretty, uh, it was pretty dismal uh, at that point. 
Um, we did, go, however, get notice that this was happening and the troops were coming. So up in Shreveport, General Richard Taylor was able to gather an army of, of almost 8,000 men to come down and they decided to meet right outside of the town of Mansfield, Louisiana here. Um, and the battle actually culminated on March 8, 1864. At that point, they caught the federal troops off guard. They had no support of the river boats as they were expecting to bring the river boats all along the river with them to help support the campaign. Uh, at Alexandria, however, the river boats were stuck and uh, were not able to move out because the river had uh, lost a, a tremendous amount of water because of the season, and uh, so they couldn't travel any further up to support the troops at Treeport. Once the Federals got to Mansfield's area, uh, they were met with these 8,000 troops. They were bottlenecked up on a road, and the 8,000 troops were spread out um, across the road, and so the Confederates were able to not only surprise them, but envelop the Union forces coming up that singular road. Uh, it caused pandemonium. The, the troops behind them panicked. Uh, wagons bolted, killing people. Uh, it was just a mass exodus of running away from Mansfield on April 8, 1864. The next day at Pleasant Hill, the Federals were able to make a little bit better stand, and they were able to uh, hold off the Confederate troops, but uh, they had to retreat still from there. Um, they had a little bit of a respite uh, up here at Campty and at, at Blair's Landing on April 12th, they had a little bit of respite. They, they got a little bit of a rest, uh, but then they kept retreating uh, all the way down here till April 23rd when you get to Monet's Ferry. That's also where they crossed the Cane River. It's a, uh, um, an opportunity. Some of the Confederate cavalry from Texas had gotten around the Union troops and were, were on a hill right here at Monet's Ferry, and Richard Taylor's army was behind the Federal troops uh, as they were coming down on the retreating federal troops, it was hoped that the Texas Cavalry would be able to stop them and they trapped them from both sides. But unfortunately, um, the will of the, the commander, Hamilton B., uh, that was in charge of this Confederate Cavalry force uh, was uh, a little lax and he uh, was worried about capture, so he retreated, allowing the federal troops to come back here to Alexandria. Uh, where Bailey's Dam was built by all of these troops that had just come off of this campaign hurriedly so that they could raise the water levels and help the 30-something ships retreat down the Red River, thus ending the campaign. What is your personal connection to the Red River campaign? At 10 years old, uh, I got a, a notice in the mail uh, for our family about one of our uh, captains of one of our uh, relatives' uh, commanding officers being reburied uh, and it just sparked my interest from there, and, and ever since uh, I've, I've gotten that, since 10 years old, I've been interested in the Civil War. What role did your ancestor play in, in the Red River Campaign? Uh, I had a couple of them in the Red River Campaign. Most of them were in the Crescent, Louisiana Regiment, uh, and they had fought all the way through the campaign, and in fact, they were here at Fort Randolph, where I work. Um, at the end of the war. What goes through your mind during the reenactment when you realize that your ancestors were part of this history? It's, it's a little bit different than going to somewhere and do, reenacting a battle where I didn't have any relatives. It, it's a little bit more personal to me and I want to do things right. Why is it important that not only young people but adults learn the history of the Civil War in Louisiana? Uh, history in, of, of the Civil War in Louisiana is of the ultimate importance. And if we uh, you know, just gloss over it and forget these facts, uh, we won't learn from the mistakes that we made in the past. And that way, uh, if we do learn from them, uh, we can maybe prevent them for the future, for our future generations, so we won't have any wars. We have events that will begin with uh, a symposia. We have two symposiums. Uh, one is entitled uh, Women in Civil War Films, and Faith Ford, one of our uh, hometown girls who made it big as an actress, is uh, going to do that symposium for us, and it'll be held at Louisiana College. And then we have another symposium that's going to be about guns on the Red River, gunboats on the Red River, and that'll be held out at Tauga. Uh, Heritage uh, Museum in Tioga, where they have a gunboat display uh, right there. So, uh, and then we have things going on from school days that our school kids can come and see the living history of what life was like on the home front at Kent Plantation House, and then can come over to Fort Randolph and see what life was like on the battlefield. Uh, and then we also have dinner theater. 
uh, called Founding LSU that will be held at Tyrone Plantation. And then we have two battle reenactments, uh, one on Saturday afternoon and one on Sunday afternoon. So we think we have broadly appealing activities that uh, anybody who is interested in Civil War history can come and find something that appeals to them. It's very important for students to learn about the history of Louisiana, and the Civil War certainly played a very important part in that. The primary mission of Kent House is education, so we focusing, we're focusing on the school days element, and we want to show the difference uh, between the soldiers that were camped in the camps themselves and then soldiers that actually occupied the grounds of plantations. We're going to show them what went on during the Civil War, how the participants uh, that lived on the plantation, how they lived. Life did go on, but it was totally, totally different. So they'll get to talk to the civilians. They'll also talk to some of the military reenactors. We will have uh, a blacksmith there. They'll talk to them about the importance of the blacksmith during the Civil War. We will also have our open hearth uh, kitchen open. There'll be some military reenactors for them to talk to as if they were camped there on the grounds of Kent House. Tell us about Kent House Plantation's uh, unique Civil War history. We have a very unique history in the area. Uh, we have documented proof that Union troops were camped on the grounds of Kent House, so we know that this happened. Also, there is kind of a mystery surrounding the fact that all the outbuildings associated with the plantation were burned when these Union troops left, but the house was saved. Why is it important that not only students but adults learn and appreciate the history of the Civil War in Louisiana? It's very important for everyone to know because this is part of, a part of our history. This is part of what makes us what we are. On Saturday, March 9th, there'll be a dinner theater presented at Tyrone Plantation, which is located in the Bayou Cotton Fields, out about five miles from town. Uh, we'll present the story of the founding of LSU, which occurred at Tyrone Plantation. People think of LSU as in Baton Rouge. No, most people don't realize that it was founded in central Louisiana. Tell us the story. Well, the gentleman, uh, George Mason Graham, who lived at Tyrone, built and lived at Tyrone, is the gentleman who served as the person on the commission to establish a state university. He was the main force behind that effort. And he was the one who hired the architect, hired the superintendent, and he hired William Tecumseh Sherman to be the first superintendent. And you would not be surprised to hear, it was built in Pineville. The governor was from Alexandria, and so were most of the board of supervisors. Now, the school actually burned after the Civil War. And once again, Graham was instrumental in going to Washington meeting with Sherman, who was then in the War Department, and managing to get a donation of federal property in order to continue the school's existence. Now, that federal property was what we now call the Pentagon Barracks. In Baton Rouge. Yes, in Baton Rouge. And of course, once those folks in Baton Rouge got a hold of the university, they wouldn't let it move for nothing. When visitors come to Fort Randolph, what will they see? They're going to see a, a fabulous uh, outdoor area which uh, people can come and, and fish and hike and bike. It's just wonderful for any sort of outdoor activities. And uh, this is part of our state park system right now, so we're very, very proud of it. So folks can uh, come online and they can go to theheartoflouisiana.com and, and uh, click on things to do and see uh, some more information about Fort Randolph. But we're very proud to have this to be able to showcase this during our uh, Civil War commemoration because um, there was the Red River campaign, of course, along the Red River, and uh, there's just such great Civil War history in our area. Actually, the city of Alexandria was burned during this time, so we have great Civil War history, and we feel that Fort Randolph is absolutely the perfect venue for these Civil War reenactments. The American Civil War totally changed our history. It changed our lives forever. And, and, it, and unfortunately, many people don't have a clue what happened in their own backyard on the very ground that they walk on. And that's what we're trying to preserve and commemorate. Certainly not celebrate, but commemorate.
for people that come to enjoy the Civil War history but also want to do some other things in central Louisiana, what else is there to do? There are many things for the entire family to do here in central Louisiana. For kids, we have a wonderful, wonderful zoo that's actually for the entire family. And then we have a children's museum downtown. We have an, an art museum for the ladies. And I'm sure some of the children and gentlemen as well would love to experience our great shopping that we have in our area. And as I mentioned before, we have uh, lots of rivers and lakes and campgrounds for outdoor activities, uh, hiking trails, biking trails, walking trails, just anything that you'd want to do outside, we have those events, but we also have wonderful museums and um, lots of, uh, our, in our arts district, we have um, entertainment all the time going on, live music uh, is going on somewhere in town uh, all the time, so there's something for everyone to do during this time. If people have questions like more information, what should they do? Well, let me refer them to our website. Our website is www.theheartoflouisiana.com. They'll be able to click on Civil War and see a listing of all of the activities that are going on.